for sharing what happens in the history which made huge impact and shape in the Buddhist monastic education in Myanmar. And also, it is great to know more insights of Sayadaw's recent published book from Bloomsbury. I would like to hear more advice and comments from you on what should be the starting point and how Myanmar as a whole should start to approach Buddhism original education philosophy as well as Shin Maharatasara's Maha education philosophy. Thank you. So this is the question. I would like to hear more advice and comments from you. What should be the starting point and how Myanmar as a whole should start to approach the Buddhism original, Buddhist original education uh, philosophy as well as Shin Maharatha Tara education philosophy. Um, I think, um, okay, the Union Minister of Education is here. Um, what the new education, the um, education reform is trying to do is um, uh, to shift or to keep more focus, not to use the word shift, to use, uh, to keep more focus to students than we ever did before. Um, the teacher still has as much authority as uh, he or she used to have before. But in the earlier days, the student was almost a passive participant. So, um, in this, in this, uh, if we give more participation to the student, everyone participate, then we will have more brain working. I'd like to give you an example, you know, from Oxford University. If I am to teach uh, the Four Noble Truths, the Four Truths, the basic Buddhist philosophy, then I would compile a list, uh, a suitable list of reading to students uh, pointing out page numbers, then in order to guide them with their reading, I would provide uh, some leading questions. So I would give that information to them. So they would go to the library and they would read and they would produce either a summary um, or an essay, a short essay, or they would read and come and, and speak. So in that way, we give more opportunity to them to think and to speak. At the same time, we also place more responsibility to them. Uh, this is not uh, a difficult task at all, a very easy task, I, I should say. It requires only the changing of psychology on the part of the teacher. Um, if we are curious that the student um, <clears throat> um, may have their own ideas, interesting ideas, and then, you know, we want to listen to them. What happened in the past is that the teacher didn't want to listen to students when they want to speak. Um, psychologically, we can say this is a form of insecure feeling psychologically. One monk, okay, was teaching Abhidhamma, Abhidhamma, and one of his students asked him a question. And he punished his student for asking a question. You see? So, a student center is for the teacher to, to, to digest the literature. That's a literature review to know 
um, everything about the subject and then to decide how much the students should start with and then to guide them with questions. <clears throat> By doing so, if the student, if they learn how to ask questions instead of learn how to provide answer, and once they learn how to ask um, a credible question, meaningful question, they are there. Thank you very much, Ayado. I think there are questions for both the Sayado, so maybe the next one. But uh, they would you like to choose one or shall I read? Shall I try to read? Sometimes it's so the next one is about anthropology. According to Durkheim's theory, religion is a compound of sacred and profane. Likewise, many Buddhists in Myanmar generally understand that uh, I don't understand the word this life to sacred by means of self-denial practice. Profane life to sacred by means of self-denial practice. I think the question is that uh, whether the practice of self-denial or sanyama that can be called profane according to the anthropology or how the venerable sees this difference between sacred and profane in Buddhism? Well, as I refer to Durkheim, in order to show that how anthropology work. I didn't say that Dung Durkheim is a, his definition is a perfect definition. I do not agree. But that definitions open the whole world for us. Otherwise, Buddhism is categorized on the, not on the religion, on the philosophy. Because the word religion is very, very Christian dominant idea. You have to have God in order to become a religion. And we don't have a, that big G God. We might have a small G, of course. But again, that will be very interpretive. You can do, interpret in different ways. So, Durkheim was the first person to be able to say among those own Western sayings that uh, the way they are defining religion is very, very inclusive. Uh, not very, very exclusive, only their own. But what about the Buddhism? For example, who doesn't believe in God then? So they don't have answer. That's why they say philosophy. But when we think of the word sasana in Pali, actually sasana doesn't mean religion. Tatana in, in, in Burmese, it doesn't mean the word religion in English, because the word in English is something to do with God. But Tatana in Pali means that Tatana kile teti Tatana, which means that the something which can cleanse your mind is called Tatana, it's called religion, you see? Very different meaning. So anthropologists try to give, try to let the Westerners open their eyes and say that, you see, if you are using the definition of a Christian definition, you are excluding so many people in the world. So he tried to give the reason, say that you have a sacred, but as well you have a profane, you have a secularization as well. Sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't like it, but that is a reflections of the kind. You can put, as you said, in the one who questions, you can define, if you want, this is to have a self-denial is a sacred, or that is a prophet, that is your choice. I wouldn't care. But if I'm anthropologist, I will look. What is the influence of that sort of a belief or that sort of a knowledge in your daily life? What will happen 
with that sort of belief in your daily practice. It is just only the way you are referring to, you always say it, but if you are practicing totally different, and I will write that, that is the only way of saying it. In real life, you are doing different things. So this is a just fact presenting machine in a way. So you can use it anyway, it's fine. Thank you, Venerable. The next question actually can be for any of the speakers. And I will summarize the question. It, there are different types of confidence for different situations. The student is interested in knowing how to build up Can I have the question? And there are several confidences in respective situation. Could you uh, tell the way how to build confidence in, in learning? Okay. And overcome some bad action. <clears throat> well, uh, it's a lot easier if the teacher is confident in himself, in herself. Okay. The teacher will be able to, to help the student to build confidence in themselves. Starting from something simple, and when the student has done it, um, and give credit to the student. So, when the student receives recognition from the teacher, that means a lot for confidence. Um, contrarily, if the teacher focuses on negative aspect of the student, just on the shortcoming, and doesn't want to recognize the positive side, then the confidence of the student you know, may be hard to, um, to develop. Now, this question goes to um, the extent of uh, re overcoming okay, some bad action, some bad karma. I think when we talk about good karma, bad karma, we are talking also about the condition for that action to arrive, to, for that action to bear fruit. In other words, an action is like the seed, for that seed to grow into a plant and into fruition. Um, there are other conditions, like water, like the soil, like the uh, oxygen, the sun, like this. In the same way, for one particular karma uh, to bear fruit, there are other conditions. The, now, we talk about positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement to keep thinking about good thing, to keep speaking about good thing, positive thing in our life and in the life of other people. I think if we do that, if we do that, the, the bad action, the bad karma, uh, we not get the necessary condition to bear fruit, but only the good one, okay? We have more opportunity. In that way, we can postpone and ultimately um, uh, banish the bad one. Neurology today, they say, whenever we have a negative thought, there's a, ne there's a, a neural connection appearing. When a negative neural connection appears in the amygdala, then the positive neural connection in the hippocampus disappears. Is similar to the way we understand karma. So by strengthening the, um, uh, the positive thinking, we strengthen the positive karma. Okay, as an anthropologist, I will go a very different way. Okay, this is very, very heavy stuff. So leave it to Oxford Sayado. I am very light. If I have to teach my student and then have to build a confidence 
his confidence, I will try to investigate what is the cause of losing his confidence first. I wouldn't go to the any text. I will see why. If he doesn't like the word Buddhism, for example, and then if you are trying to force Buddhism on him, of course he wouldn't accept. So it is a teacher's. Now, how do you, how do you cheat him in a way? It's not a good word. But you have to get around and see that might, you might not use the word Buddhism at all because he's scared of the word Buddhism. So maybe he's very interested in computer game. So I will go and try to explain, I try to let him go to the computer game, but through that he will get into the Buddhism without knowing. And once he is in the game, you don't have to do anything. The only thing is that once you're in the game, you have to come, stop, stop, come and have a tea. This is dinner time. And come and come. And he doesn't want to come because he's very into that. And that is a, how you develop the confidence. And that is a trick you have to develop as a teacher. You have to, as a Buddha, when he give teaching to anyone, he know what is his weakness, what is his strength. And just give a one word, one sentence, that's work. And that is how I base on He's looking at the people, looking at their community, so I will give that way, that method, so that he can recognize, he can cognitively, he can develop his cognitivity by himself. So as a teacher, I just, you know, pamper here, pamper there, if to go out, and let him bring out himself. The next question is Ax in Myanmar. One who asks is Ulasu. Let out your Jay Munye, Yango. To me, I got all, look at it. Nitty Alaga, Mamma Nangama, Amyazuha, Bali, there, Bali, there, Bali, the Gadi, who pure be all, Bali, a bad, subbed, and Yenjay Mude, which you don't yard it, and Yenjang gave out it. Good or other machine at the jaw, Yenja Muha, Dorothy, you univar, and I'll share some bit of better loneliness with Ago. ก็รู้สวัสดีเนี่ยสุดาโกเจซูปิวิเชบีบาเนี่ยเสียรอว่าเชบาเลยอ่าแทงคิวเวอร์เซย์อะเดียวเราไม่เคยมีกันพวกม
ไอ้หมวยเนี่ยแลบันแลชามอยู่ปิ่นลงเนี่ยแลชาส่วนนะสั้นเนี่ยช่องใหม่บ่หวยเลยบ่มรุงเงยระหว่างส่วนนี้
ตัวตะเกพอบสิลาผิดมาพอบสิโลโรตรุอตวะโอมอตုံးจาลอตုံးวินโลยูสฟูผิดโลเอลุมะหุเวเนอืมโอคองคาลุไทเนเนอนันย
our monastic educations, it is very important that how we balance the ideas. Very important to have the background knowledge of Tipitaka, Dhamma, and anything. But provided that you have to make sense with your true life, then that will be the Dhamma. What is Dhamma means? Upholding. Upholding your, 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 your own life, upholding your, who you are. Yeah, that is how we have to balance the education. Because education doesn't mean that teach. Education means bringing out. You see? Education means something you bring out after you understood. It is not a kind of a teaching, teaching, teaching. It is a cognitivity. That's why in the Panchasila, Sikha Padang Samadhyami, Tikha Padang Samadhyami, which means that what? I dedicate myself to study in deeply the lesson. You see? It's not say that, no, you don't do that. People say, don't do. And if you say that, you, if you have a label here, don't come up, people will come up. Why? You see, that is a rebellious type of people. But if you say something very makes sense, let them understood, let them cognitive, and that is how education should be. Very short. Yeah. Yes, I have just claimed. The next question is, Brief answers to the big questions of the Siara Stephen Hawking, AI, artificial intelligence, um, ดาเลอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอื
but he was neglected. And the fox, and uh, the wolves, the fed that boy. He's a human, totally. But he was brought up as a fox, as a dog. You see? So his body is through human. But because of his interaction, he lost his humanity. When the people find him, they have to re-educate a lot until he came back to be human. Otherwise, he was walking as a dog, he was eating as a dog, everything. So what is the, the interactions makes you human? If you are born, for example, when we are born, do we know he was human? If animal, they know they have an animal instinct. If it is a dog, gave a birth to a small puppy, the small puppy can go and find the mother's milk to where to suck in. As a human body, as a human, when we are born, what can you do? Do you have a human instinct? No. Animal have animal instinct. But human instinct, no. We don't know. We just cry, cry, cry. If nobody even, it is said that even mother tried to give the milk, even you don't know how to suck the milk. We don't know how to survive ourselves. The mother had to teach you by drop maybe, uh, two drops, until something get on and you started to, you know, started to chalk up and then started to, uh, to get some taste and so and so and started slowly started. So you see, that makes you human. The human for anthropologist means that uh, how you interact. Interactions make you somebody. Therefore, for anthropologists, human is a copycat machine. So always copying someone. If there is nothing to copy, if there is a dog there, then you will be a dog, not a human anymore. So in order to have a human, you always have to be very careful with the Buddha's word, asewana jabala nam pandita nanchasewana etang mangalamutamang. That is a human. Now, question to me, Havare, Pamalu, me, Vare, Beta Luga, Jango Sheva in Tegudu, to the Adne, Nanga Sasa Yiga, Jauna, Mount Ombo, Sheba, Mira Gushinga, Janoto Boda Vada, Boda Sindu Rodrigo, to look Buzo Javare, Zidi Rogole, go where Buzo Javare, Boda Yubaro Miam Yago, Piago, Saina Yimayu, Buzo go with Javare, Davi May. Pado Zidu will go with Buzo Java the day. Boda, yes, Sano Dadu, good Tabna Tajin Jonga, Tomaho, a Chami, Jonga Jonga, Piar, 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 ဒီဒတ်တော်တွေပါတယ်အဲ့ဒါဒါတုစိတ်တီခေါ်တယ်အသုံးပြုတဲ့ပြည်ဆီးတွေနှစ်ဆောက်အသုံးပြုပြည်
ตัวก็อถอกกูปิ้วโลเนี่ยนะถ้าเราอะโหโหเลื่อนๆเลื่อนๆเนี่ยจริงๆนี่เอ่อที่ไม่คงอภิจาร์จริงๆสิบาเป
I have some scratch in my face, then it is your job to clean it out. So that is Buddhism. That is not anthropology. Anthropology shows you that there is some paint on your face. That's all. Thank you very much, Venerable. Uh, now there is a question that I assume it was for the Venerable Brahma Pandit. It's about philosophy. So may I ask the Venerables to uh, answer on his behalf? Okay. So this is, uh, we are in the philosophy, philosopher in proxy. Um, lecture in Chicago in philo is philosophy and Dhamma same. After that, it's all what is is in the Burmese language. I can't read. Philosophy in the many uh, philosophers thinking. Dhamma is not just the thinking of yes. It's very actually the Brahma Bandit, Venerable Brahma Bandit, also mentioned when you say philosophy. It is very simple, okay? Very simple. Again, you ask anthropologists to define philosophy. Philosophy is simply love of knowledge. You see? So you can ask, you know, where, how, you know, where we come from? Where, where, where are we going after we die? All those unanswerable questions, the philosophy will come. And then we will debate. No. For example, in the Papua New Guinea, there is some certain tribe. They believe that they were born from the sea. They said that when, because they are the island people, when they go to the sea, the old women, they will go and uh, take the bath in the sea, and the god of sea inseminate them. And then that's how they, they, the human is born, you see? So people will debate on that like that. Well, how can it be? And this has become philosophy. And when you satisfy with the answers of debating and debating and debating, and that is a philosophy. But Buddha said that. Buddhism is very different. It is not a drishti, it is not an opinion, it is not an idea, it is not a kind of love of knowledge. Chua kha to bhagavata dhammo. Dhamma is a, you have to have a good intention. Sandi tiko, you, you can see for yourself. Jitti, you can see for yourself. Akaliko, it is universal. It is a no time factor, it is a universal. It is not only Burmese, it is only Thai, it is African, it is Alaskan, whatever, it is the same fact. Akaliko, universal. Ehi pasiko, because it is a universal, you can ehi, come on, come on, come on. Pasiko, look at it, you can show it very proudly. And you can debate it until the cows come home back. So you can debate. But if you keep on debating, ehi pasiko, that is a philosophy. But Buddha says that Buddhism is not ending there. Buddhism has to be ehi pasiko, open a eco. What is open a eco? You can practice what you are talking about. It is a pragmatic point. It is a practicable. So once you are practicing, once you can practice, you can see, test for yourself. Then you will know what it is by yourself, your personal kind of uh, proving. It's a personal experience at Pachatang. And that is a dharma, you see. Philosophy is an idea you develop, but dharma is something very much different. Dharma means that you have to understand and you have to get result out of it. And you can do it, not debate it. We can conference, we can debate. But what is all about? But if you can get some of the clarification when you go back home. Oh, from Oxford Sayado, I have learned that. From now on, I'm going to practice this way. And when you practice, you find ultimate happiness. And that is Dharma. <clears throat> the second part, so without exam, how can we study knowledge? Without exam, how can we study knowledge? So I want to, um, I, I, I don't want to answer this, but I want to give you some ideas. Um, examination is an assessment that um, certain people require some time for job, uh, some time for promotion, like that. And those people, they try to gain knowledge for a certain purpose. What the Buddha is saying is that uh, knowledge, just for, for its own sake, is no point. But knowledge 
that have solved problem. That is problem based learning, problem based knowledge, problem related knowledge. That's the only useful one. Um, so, um, how can we study without exam? Actually, the knowledge that we get through examination, we forget. When you a at a standard, you forget almost anything that you had learned before. And when you at university, you almost forget everything that you have learned before. It's not about knowledge, it's about the skill that we have. Skill, okay, social skill, thinking skill, speaking skill, that kind of skill. Okay, and if, if I um, uh, may be allowed to uh, take your uh, attention, to bring your attention to Mingla Do, Mangala Sutta, Bahuti Sinsa, that's general knowledge. Tepinsa, that's professional knowledge. Vinayosa, that's discipline. Ubadidasa, that's speaking skill, that's communication skill. So, Minglado talks about education in that way. But in <coughs> uh, Professor Sakya um, Omsawisudi <coughs> had just said, it's interaction. So, the skill that is useful for human interaction, that's the most useful one. Um, economic, define one interaction. Um, commerce, define one interaction. History, define one interaction. Physics, define one interaction. Okay, religion defines another interaction. So, many ways of defining that interaction and all those skills, we call them knowledge. This day, because the institution which run exam, they seem to control, to have the monopoly of, of knowledge. That is why we cannot think of um, obtaining knowledge with the exam. With the exam. Actually, if you look at uh, the most knowledgeable monks or most knowledgeable all the or scientists, most of the knowledge that they get, breakthrough knowledge, is not from exam. Is from their own motivation to help the world. Okay, that knowledge is um, is is worthier than that that we learn from the exam. Thank you. Very long. The whole paper. Thank you, venerables. In terms of a building confidence, we know psychologically that when things are unfamiliar, we will uncertain or underconfidence. You are right. However, is there a sense in which new educational values are already familiar to us? Maybe not in education, but in one, but in our Buddhism. Um, Non-elitist and student-centered learning seem to embody values of non-discrimination, meta, and empirical inquiry. Not holding to views is very like any comparative study. Historical is, uh, historicism uh, counteracts our tendency to see things as, uh, what is that, it, uh, for forgetting they are contingent, etc., etc. So, do we actually have good reason to already feel confident in this educational approach? Not only are we already partly familiar with it, but it seems to be an approach that can embody even more Buddhist values than ever before. Is there hope for this? How can we emphasize the connections rather than differences? I have to give this one to the Oxford Sayado with honor. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> the, the Buddhist idea is um, um, to, to help us to see that the differences that we, that we have, they are all my mate. They are all my mate. 
and they are all self-created. And to use a stronger word is self-inflicted pain. So when we talk about change, unsatisfactoriness, and universal value, anicca dukkha, anicca as change, dukkha as unsatisfactoriness, anatta as universal, pain is universal, joy is universal, in that sense. We actually, in, in, in the Buddhist practice, we actually emphasize commonness. Um, if we say, if I experience my tiredness uh, properly, and then I apply that, okay, I visualize that on other people, uh, they must be also tired, then I see something in common. When I'm, I'm hungry, if I watch my, my hunger um, mindfully, and then I use maybe 30 seconds to project it to other people, on other people, and I will get a sense that they are also hungry. So we get something in common. And to see that commonality um, is to help us um, um, from... Um, you know, to, to, to help us not to go into isolation. Otherwise, you know, we tend to go into isolation. I mean, being unique means to go into isolation. Uh, if somebody is uh, depressed, if he or she thinks that she is the only one who is depressed, other people are all happy. Um, so, there's isolation in terms of uh, psychology. So, what we are driving at in terms of Buddhist value, which is used in um, um, psychotherapy, in uh, cognitive therapy, and, and all that, is that um, uh, our experience, our daily experience, are all too common. There is a research which says uh, every day we have about 50,000 thoughts, and 98% of them are repetitive meaning the same as yesterday. This is true to everyone. Um, this is to say, at least according to this research, 98% are common. Uh, we just think of so what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, who we say anything good about us or, or gossip about us. You know, our minds are centered around these issues. So a very repetitive um, so it's a function of the mind. The, uh, this question is very good that um, um, we uh, the, 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 in Burmese what we say the three characteristics of human being and they are common they are um, universal they are commonality thank you I think the time is up for today, so I would like to thank the speakers once more, and we will resume tomorrow. There have been many questions that couldn't be answered at the, during this session, but the Oxford Sayado will be here tomorrow for the whole day, and hopefully we will have time tomorrow to continue with this session. So please uh, uh, be patient with that. And so now we will stop, and I will pass the microphone to the yeah. MCs for resuming tomorrow. Thank you. Lisa Bado, Yenya Ewen Yi Nye Tegoa, Tu Pei Shang Ta Do Edo Da Mya, Tu De Di Bien Jia Shim Mya Ka Mya, A Chien Lien Da Mi Che De Dwe Jiao, Me Ta De, Me Wen Mya Gu, Jia Na Di Ma Nep Shen Ha Se Bi Do, Pi Wa Me, Nya Jia Ma, Da Yen No Ma, A Jian Bo Bi Ta Mi Da Do, Ma Lu Jia Wa Nye Ka Mya, La Ka Pyo Da Ma, Tsiya Do Ye Ye Fue Ha, Di Jin Se, Gu, Nya Da Che Zi Bi Ma Pi Ba De, Ma Nep Shen No, um, thank you very much to the uh, venerable panelists and our 
chairpersons for making this question and answer session a very presentable one and we would like to express our deep appreciation to our audience for your active participation and being remain in the conference venue till the end. So before we conclude today's program, we would like to update you with the tomorrow for the second day program. Just, just like today, we will have um, afternoon paper reading sessions and we will have three speakers who would be speaking on the different approach. For the chair, we have the honor of Venerable Oxford Siado, Professor Dr. Damasami and Siaji, Professor Dr. Dola, Head of Department of History, retired University of Mandalay. And to acquaint you with the uh, tomorrow papers. It is also equally very interesting and I very much look forward to seeing you all. Looking at the three panelists tomorrow, uh, you might notice that all the three lay scholars, though they are lay scholars, um, it's our honor that they all are graduated from the University of London and University of the Cambridge. Apart from that, they have looked deeply into how Buddhism and the, uh, at the same time they try to dig the hidden treasures which our Myanmar people have forgotten. So not taking much ado, um, we would like to invite you for the tomorrow program and we very much look forward to seeing you all tomorrow once again. So, the most venerable members of the Sangha, venerable nuns, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, with the kind permission of the most venerables and excellencies, may we now have the honor to announce that the first day of the International Conference on Remembering the past and ways forward, a multidisciplinary approach to Pali, Abhidhamma and Buddhist studies has accomplished successfully. And on behalf of the organizing committee and Shan State Buddhist University, we really would like to express our heartfelt thanks and deep appreciation to each and every one, our esteemed audience for gracing the occasion and for the active participation, and the University of Yangon for hosting the event, the donors, volunteers for making this event a success. So thank you, thank you very much once again. I hope we all make this event a success. So we look very much look forward to seeing you tomorrow. ရှင်ကုန်တိတ်သူရှာပြည်ထိမ်းမိုင်ရေခန္ဓာတီယာဖြင့်ကျင်းပါတယ်ပါလီအပြီးတမားနဲ့ပုဒ္ဓစာပေ